Progress Report 1, March 3rd. Dr. Strauss says I should write down what I think and remember and everything that happens to me from now on. I don't know why, but he says it's important, so they will see if they can use me. I hope they use me, because Miss Kinnian says maybe they can make me smart. I want to be smart. My name is Charlie Gordon. I work in Dormer's Bakery, where Mr. Donner gives me $11 a week and bread or cake if I want. I'm 32 years old, and next month is my birthday. I told Dr. Strauss and Professor Niemer I can't write good, but he says it don't matter. He says I should write just like I talk and like I write compositions in Miss Kinnian's class at the Beekman College Center for Retarded Adults, where I go to learn three times a week on my time off. Dr. Strauss says to write a lot everything I think and everything that happens to me, but I can't think anymore because I have nothing to write, so I will close for today. Yours truly, Charlie Gordon. Progress Report 2, March 4th. I had a test today. I think I failed it, and I think maybe now they won't use me. What happened is I went to Professor Niemer's office on my lunchtime, like they said, and a secretary took me to a place that said psych department on the door with a long hall and a lot of little rooms with only a desk and chairs. And a nice man was in one of the rooms, and he had some white cards with ink spilled all over them. He said, sit down, Charlie, and make yourself comfortable and relax. He had a white coat like a doctor, but I don't think he was no doctor, because he didn't tell me to open my mouth and say, ah. All he had was those white cards. His name is Bert. I forgot his last name because I don't remember so good. I don't know what he was going to do, and I was holding on tight to the chair, like sometimes when I go to a dentist. Only Bert ain't no dentist neither, but he kept telling me to relax. And that gets me scared, because it always means it's going to hurt. So Bert said, Charlie, what do you see on this card? I saw the spilled ink, and I was very scared, even though I got my rabbit's foot in my pocket, because when I was a kid, I always failed tests in school, and I spilled ink, too. I told Bert I saw ink spilled on a white card. Bert said yes, and he smiled, and that made me feel good. He kept turning all the cards, and I told him somebody spilled ink on all of them, red and black. I thought that was an easy test, but when I got up to go, Bert stopped me and said, Now sit down, Charlie, we're not through yet. There's more we gotta do with these cards. I didn't understand about it, but I remember Dr. Strauss said, Do anything the tester told me, even if I don't make no sense, because that's testing. I don't remember so good what Bert said, but I remember he wanted me to say what was in the ink. I didn't see nothing in the ink, but Bert said there were pictures there. I couldn't see no pictures. I really tried to see. I holded the cards up close and then far away. Then I said if I had my glasses, I could probably see better. I usually want to wear my eyeglasses in the movies or to watch TV. But I said maybe they will help me see the pictures in the ink. I put them on, and I said now let me see the card again. I bet I find it now. I tried hard, but I still couldn't find the pictures. I only saw the ink. I told Bert maybe I need new glasses. He wrote something down on a paper, and I got scared of failing the test. So I told him it was a very nice picture of ink with pretty points all around the edges. But he shaked his head, so that wasn't it neither. I asked him if other people saw things in the ink, and he said yes, they imagined pictures in the ink blot. He told me the ink on the card was called ink blot. Bert is very nice, and he takes slow like Miss Kinman does in her class where I go to learn reading for slow adults. He explained me it was a raw shock test. He said people see things in the ink. I said, show me where. He didn't show me. He just kept saying, think, imagine, there's something on the card. I told him I imagined an ink blot. He shaked his head, so that wasn't right either. He said, what does it remind you of? Pretend it's something. I closed my eyes for a long time to pretend, and then I said, I pretend a bottle of ink spilled all over a white card. And that's when the point of his pencil broke, and then we got up and went out. I don't think I passed the raw shock test. Third progress report, March 5th. Dr. Strauss and Professor Nemour say, It don't matter about the ink on the cards. I told them I didn't spill the ink on them, and I couldn't see anything in the ink. They said maybe they will still use me. I told Dr. Strauss and Miss Kinnian never gave me tests like that, only writing and reading. He said Miss Kinnian told him I was her bestest pupil in the Beekman School for Retarded Adults, and I tried the hardest because I really wanted to learn. I wanted it more even than people who are smarter even than me. Dr. Strauss asked me, how come you went to the Beekman School all by yourself, Charlie? How did you find out about it? 
I said I don't remember. Professor Niemer said, but why did you want to learn to read and spell in the first place? I told him because all my life I wanted to be smart and not dumb. And my mom always told me to try and learn, just like Miss Kinian tells me, but it's very hard to be smart, and even when I learn something in Miss Kinian's class at the school, I forget a lot. Dr. Strauss wrote some things on a piece of paper, and Professor Niemer talked to me very serious. He said, you know, Charlie, we are not sure how this experiment will work on people, because we only tried it up to now on animals. I said that's what Miss Kinian told me. But I don't even care if it hurts or anything because I'm strong and I will work hard. I want to get smart if they will let me. They said they got to get permission from my family. But my Uncle Herman, who used to take care of me, is dead. And I don't remember about my family. I didn't see my mother or father or my little sister Norma for a long, long, long time. Maybe they're dead too. Dr. Strauss asked me where they used to live. I think in Brooklyn. He said they will see if maybe they can find them. I hope I don't have to write too much of these progress reports because it takes a long time and I get to sleep very late and I'm tired at work in the morning. Gimpy hollered at me because I dropped a tray full of rolls I was carrying over to the oven. They get dirty and he had to wipe them off before he put them into bake. Gimpy hollers at me all the time when I do something wrong, but he really likes me because he's my friend. Boy, if I get smart, won't he be surprised? Progress report four, March 6th. I had more crazy tests today in case they use me. That same place, but a different little testing room. The nice lady who gave it to me told me the name, and I asked her, how do you spell it so I can put it down right in my progress report? Thematic, a perception test. I don't know the first two words, but I know what test means. You gotta pass it or you get bad marks. This test looked easy because I could see the pictures. Only this time, she didn't want to tell me what I saw in the pictures. That mixed me up. I told her yesterday, Bert said I should tell him what I saw in the ink. She said that don't make a difference because this test is something else. Now you gotta make up stories about the people in the pictures. I said, how can I tell stories about people I don't know? She said make believe, but I told her that's lies. I never tell lies anymore because when I was a kid I made lies and I always got hit. I got a picture in my wallet of me and Norma with Uncle Herman, who got me the job to be janitor at Dormer's Bakery before he died. I said I could make stories about them because I lived with Uncle Herman a long time, but the lady didn't want to hear about them. She said this test and the other one, the raw shock, was forgetting personality. I laughed. I told her, how can you get that thing from cards that somebody spilled ink on and photos of people you don't even know? She looked angry and took the pictures away. I don't care. I guess I failed that test, too. Then I drawed some pictures for her, but I don't draw so good. Later, the other tester, Bert, in the white coat, came back. His name is Bert Sheldon, and he took me to a different place on the same fourth floor in the Beekman University that said Psychology Laboratory on the door. Bert said psychology means minds, and laboratory means a place where they make experiments. I thought he meant, like, where they made the chewing gum. But now I think it's puzzles and games because that's what we did. I couldn't work the puzzle so good because it was all broke and the pieces couldn't fit in the holes. One game was a paper with lines in all directions and lots of boxes. On one side it said start and on the other end it said finish. He told me that game was a maze and I should take the pencil and go from where it said start to where it said finish without crossing over any of the lines. I didn't understand the maze. And we used up a lot of papers. Then Bert said, look, I'll show you something. Let's go to the experimental lab. Maybe you'll get the idea. We went up to the fifth floor to another room with lots of cages and animals. They had monkeys and some mouses. It had a funny smell like old garbage. And there was other people in white coats playing with the animals. So I thought it was like a pet store, but there wasn't no customers. Bert took a white mouse out of the cage and showed him to me. Bert said, that's Algernon, and he can do this amaze very good. I told him, you show me how he does that. Well, do you know he put Algernon in a box, like a big table, with a lot of twists and turns, like all kinds of walls, and a start and a finish, like the paper had? Only there was a screen over the big table. And Bert took out this clock and lifted up a sliding door and said, let's go, Algernon. And the mouse sniffed two or three times and started to run. 
First he ran down one long row, and then when he saw he couldn't go no more, he came back where he started from, and he just stood there a minute, wiggling his whiskers. Then he went off in the other direction and started to run again. It was just like he was doing the same thing Bert wanted me to do with the lines on the paper. I was laughing because I thought it was going to be a hard thing for a mouse to do. But then Algernon kept going all the way through that thing, all the right ways till he came out where it said finish, and he made a squeak. Bert says that means he was happy because he did the thing right. Boy, I said, that's a smart mouse. Bert said, would you like to race against Algernon? I said, sure. And he said he had a different kind of maze made of wood with rows scratched in it and an electric stick like a pencil. And he could fix up Algernon's maze to be the same like that one, so we could both be doing the same kind. He moved all the boards around on Algernon's table because they come apart and he could put them together in different ways. And then he put the screen back on top so Algernon wouldn't jump over any rows to get to the finish. Then he gave me the electric stick and showed me how to put it in between the rows. And I'm not supposed to lift it off the board, just file the little scratches until the pencil can't move anymore or I get a little shock. He took out his clock and he was trying to hide it, so I tried not to look at him, and that made me very nervous. When he said go, I tried to go, but I didn't know where to go. I didn't know the way to take. Then I heard Algernon squeaking from the box on the table and his feet scratching like he was running already. I started to go, but I went in the wrong way and got stuck, and a little shock in my fingers, so I went back to the start, but every time I went a different way, I got stuck in the shock. It didn't hurt or anything, just made me jump a little, and Bert said it was to show me that I did the wrong thing. I was halfway on the board when I heard Algernon squeak like he was happy again, and that means he won the race. And the other ten times we did it over... Algernon won every time because I couldn't find the right rows to get to where it says finish. I didn't feel bad because I watched Algernon and I learned how to finish the amaze even if it takes me a long time. I didn't know mice were so smart. Progress Report 5, March 6. They found my sister Norma who lives with my mother in Brooklyn and she gave permission for the operation. So they're going to use me. I'm so excited I can hardly write it down. But then Professor Niemer and Dr. Strauss had an argument about it first. I was sitting in Professor Niemer's office when Dr. Strauss and Bert, Bert Sheldon came in. Professor Niemer was worried about using me, but Dr. Strauss told him I looked like the best one they tested so far. Bert told him Miss Kinnian recommended me the best from all the people who she was teaching at the Center for Retarded Adults, where I go. Dr. Strauss said I had something that was very good. He said I had a good motivation. I never even knowed I had that. I felt good when he said not everybody with an IQ of 68 had that thing like I had it. I don't know what it is or where I got it, but he said Algernon had it too. Algernon's motivation is the cheese they put in his box, but it can't be only that because I didn't have no cheese this week. Professor Nemo was worried about my IQ getting too high for mine that was too low and I would get sick from it. And Dr. Strauss told Professor Nemar something I didn't understand. So while they was talking, I wrote down some of the words in my notebook for keeping my progress reports. He said, Harold, that's Professor Nemar's first name, I know Charlie's not what you had in mind as the first of your new breed of intellect couldn't get the word, Superman. But most people have his low went are host and uncoop. They're usually dull and ap apathe and hard to reach. Charlie has a good nature, and he's interested and eager to please. Then Professor Nemar said, Remember, he will be the first human being ever to have his intelligence increased by surgery. Dr. Strauss said, That's exactly what I meant. Where will we find another retarded adult with this tremendous motivation to learn? Look how well he has learned to read and write for his low mental age. A tremendous achievement. I didn't get all the words, but they were talking too fast, but it sounded like Dr. Strauss and Bert was on my side, and Professor Niemer wasn't. Bert kept saying Alice Kinnian feels he has an overwhelming desire to learn. He actually begged to be used, and that's true because I wanted to be smart. Dr. Strauss got up and walked around and said, I say we use Charlie, and Bert nodded. Professor Niemer scratched his head and rubbed his nose with his thumb and said, maybe you're right, we will use Charlie but we've got to make them understand that a lot of things can go wrong with the experiment. 
when he said that, I got so happy and excited, I jumped up and shaked his hand for being so good to me. I think he got scared when I did that. He said, Charlie, we were worked on this for a long time, but only on animals like Algernon. We are sure there's no physical danger for you, but there are other things we can't tell until we try it. I want you to understand this might fail and then nothing would happen at all, or it might even succeed temporary and leave you worse off than you are now. Do you understand what that means? If that happens, we will have to send you back to the Warren State home to live. I said, I don't care because I ain't afraid of nothing. I'm very strong and I always do good. And besides, I got my lucky rabbit foot and I never break the mirror in my life. I dropped some dishes once, but that don't count for bad luck. Then Dr. Strauss said, Charlie, even if this fails, you're making a great contribution to science. This experiment has been successful on lots of animals, but it's never been tried on a human being. You will be the first. I told him, thanks, Doc. You won't be sorry for giving me second chance, like Miss Kinian says. And I mean it, like I told them. After the operation, I'm going to try to be smart. I'm going to try awful hard. Progress Report 6, March 8th. I'm scared. Lots of people who work at the college and the people at the medical school came to wish me luck. Bert the tester brought me some flowers. He said they were from the people at the psych department. He wished me luck. I hope I have luck. I got my rabbit's foot and my luck penny and my horseshoe. Dr. Strauss says, don't be superstitious, Charlie. This is science. I don't know what science is, but they all keep saying it, so maybe it's something that helps you have good luck. Anyway, I'm keeping my rabbit's foot in one hand and my lucky penny in the other hand with the hole in it. The penny, I mean. I wish I could take the horseshoe with me, but it's so heavy, so I'll just leave it in my jacket. Joe Carp from the bakery brought me a chocolate cake from Mr. Donner and the folks at the bakery, and they hope I get better soon. At the bakery, they think I'm sick because that's what Professor Neymar said I should tell them, and nothing about an operation for getting smart. That's a secret until after, in case it don't work or something goes wrong. Then Miss Kinian came to see me, and she brought me some magazines to read. She looked kind of nervous and scared. She fixed up the flowers on my table and put everything nice and neat, not messed up like I made it. And she fixed the pillow under my head. She likes me a lot because I try very hard to turn, learn everything, not like some of the people at the adult center who don't really care. She wants me to get smart, I know. Then Professor Nemer said, I can't have any more visitors because I gotta rest. I asked Professor Nemer if I could beat Algernon in the race after the operation, and he said maybe. If the operation works good, I'll show that mouse I can be as smart as he is, even smarter. Then I'll be able to read better and spell the words good and know lots of things and be like other people. Boy, that would surprise everyone. If the operation works and I get smart, maybe I'll be able to find my mom and dad and sister and show them. Boy, would they be surprised to see me smart, just like them and my sister. Professor Nemer says if it works good and it's permanent, they will make other people like me smart also. Maybe people all over the world. And he said that means I'm doing something great for science, and I'll be famous, and my name will go down in the books. I don't care so much about being famous. I just want to be smart like other people so I can have lots of friends who like me. They didn't give me anything to eat today. I don't know what eating got to do with getting smart, and I'm hungry. Professor Nemer took away my chocolate cake. That Professor Nemar is a grouch. Dr. Strauss says I can have it back after the operation. You can't eat before our operation. Not even cheese.